All right, yeah. I'm Laura Ingram. This is the Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. Nowhere to hide. That's the focus of tonight's angle. So we were all excited for what we assumed would be an hour-long sit-down interview, rare for Joe Biden, in primetime tonight. But Jake Tapper, a fairly friendly interviewer, was only able to get 15 minutes out of our 46th president of the United States. 15 minutes? This was the big exclusive? I mean, that's hardly enough time to cover Hunter and the hookers. Well, not to mention the foreign policy mess we're in now with the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Remember, it was only late last week when Biden was warning of nuclear Armageddon. He called it the worst risk since the 62 Cuban Missile Crisis. But tonight, Biden gave a very different assessment of the situation. Do you think Putin is a rational actor? I think he is a rational actor who's miscalculated significantly. But then Biden seemed to contradict himself just moments later. I think the speech, is, okay. his objectives were not right. I think he thought, Jake, I think he thought he's going to be welcome with open arms, that this was, this has been the, the home of Mother Russia and Kiev, and, and they were, he was going to be welcomed. And I, I think he just totally miscalculated. Wait, I, I, I'm very confused. So Putin's a rational actor with irrational goals? How does that make sense? So Biden's inability to provide a cogent, clear answer to an important question that involves the safety of every living American, it's not just disastrous for him politically, it's extremely disturbing, not to mention dangerous. No wonder the interview was cut so short. And to that point, CNN does have an obligation, does it not, if there are any questions about this, to release the entire exchange with Biden. Was any part of this interview edited? Any questions off limits? Any restrictions set by the White House beforehand? Uh, Biden's very shaky exchange comes on the heels of more terrible polling that was just released. Numbers that point to Democrats dimming chances of holding on to power. Now, this was from Reuters tonight. Biden's approval numbers remain near the lowest of his presidency just four weeks until November's election day. And a new IMF report also just out spells more bad news for America under Democrat leadership. Check this out. For 2022, the IMF is projecting that U.S. growth will only hit 1.6 percent. And for next year, it gets even worse, with the real GDP expected to be a pathetic 1 percent. Yet the Biden administration just ignores the harsh truth. They're literally lying about how things really are. From the perspective of the United States, I think the United States is doing very well. I remain encouraged. The U.S. economy is strong. We had an employment report just last Friday that shows we continue to have a very resilient economy. I don't think there will be a recession. If it is, it'll be a very slight recession. Okay, they need to hit the shuffleboard court. I mean, I mean, America, the truth is, is facing a prolonged period of economic decline. And yet... Biden's Wall Street backers, they're somehow just coming around to the idea that some of his policies may have spiked inflation. The pro-China globalists wanted Bidenomics, and they got Bidenomics. The Fed and the government together gave an enormous amount of debt and credit and created a lurch forward, a giant lurch forward, and created a bubble, okay, and now they're putting on the brakes. Okay, so now we're going to create a giant lurch backward. Is that the sophisticated analysis, Ray? Lurch backward? What did he think would happen? Everything Biden said on the campaign trail signaled trouble. Printing money, borrowing money. And you're going to have this big fiscal stimulation. You're going to get a lot of stimulation. So like you just get more with Biden. Uh, uh, of course, as during the 2020 campaign, we heard the same stunning lack of insight from billionaire Larry Fink as well, because the BlackRock founder has two black eyes, one for pushing the idiotic and destructive ESG agenda and another for this post-election comment about Biden. They're looking for a voice that moderates, not a voice that incites. I truly believe um, President-elect Biden can be that voice of reason the marketplace is encouraged by having a leader now that is more inclusive, a leader that could probably bring a little more global harmony. 
Okay, how's that marketplace looking for you now, Larry? Or do you call this global harmony? Yes, Biden and his economic team of dullards and dimwits were propped up by big time by Wall Street. Even the supposed reasonable Democrat like Jamie Dimon, the CEO of J.P. Morgan, he got in on the act. Back in October of 2020, he took great comfort in the fact that Biden was from Delaware, which he described as a pro-business state, adding that, I'm hopeful Joe Biden has been around the block. He knows a lot of people. He's a compromiser, a unifier, in a good way by nature. Well, and what's Jamie saying two years later? And this is serious stuff, okay? This is inflation, and it's the war. And these are very, very serious things, which I think are likely to push the U.S. Uh, and you know, the world. I mean, Europe is already in a recession, and they're likely to put U.S. in some kind of recession. Uh, aren't diamonds supposed to shine brightly, be really clear? Well, in 2020, Joe Biden was incapable of campaigning. I'm sure Jamie saw that. But when Biden did speak, he mildled the platitudes of the left, including all the anti-oil and gas nonsense that we've gotten used to. And yet Wall Street still backed him. They thought it was a good idea to put a $23 trillion economy in the hands of a doddering goofball. They showered Biden and the Democrats with huge campaign contributions. I want to be clear in making um, that from my getting to know the leaders, and I don't know she, but I know the, those around them, um, that they are reasonable people. I think the longer term picture in China is still bright because I know the people and I know the culture and I think it's good. They were either sucking up to China or sucking up to Biden. Well, how long will it be before key members of the plutocracy admit they were wrong? Because they deserve part of the blame here because they gave Biden cover. The entire world economy is now being flushed down the toilet. Our 401ks, our home values, savings, all down, down, down. It's going to be years before these losses are made up. And for many Americans, they may never see a positive swing back in their lifetime. Millions of Americans could lose their jobs. So a lot of people owe America apologies. The media created the Biden wrecking ball because they didn't really ever cover him. And the craven cads on Wall Street funded him. And it'll be up to all of us to take our business and our votes elsewhere. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.